Hello, welcome. In my last video, I asked you to vote what is your favourite film camera ever with your top three. After 20,000 views, your votes are in. So in today's video, I'm going to share your top 10 favourite cameras. Stay with me and I'll also include 10 cameras to try before you die. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLife.com. Before we start, a huge thanks to my patrons. If you want to see more videos, I can link those videos below. Okay, so what did you vote as your favourite film cameras? In 10th place, it was a draw. You've got the Leica MP, the Leica 3F, the Nikon F, Nikon F2, Nikon FM, Contax 2 and Olympus OM2. Coming in at number 9, this is a camera I've not used before but popular with you guys is the Linhoff Technica cameras and large format cameras often 4x5 or 9x12 format and I love the fact that they're a bit like a Leica so they're quite compact, they're German precision built, really kind of high quality. So you get a lot of negative in quite a small box. So maybe that's the camera I'll have to experiment with in the future. Number eight. Now I must give an apology to my poor like M2 because this is a camera that I will never sell. But I forgot to mention it in my first I will never sell video. So let me show you what an M2 sounds like. Really crisp and really beautiful. The benefit of an M2 over an M3 is for glasses wearers, you can see the 50mm frame lines if you use an M2 rather than an M3. I prefer an M3 because the M2's got the old fashioned frame counter which I often forget to manually set. Here's an M3, you can see it's got a modern frame counter, if you want to call it modern, <laughs> modern in 1954. We'll get to the M3 so I won't fire that one shit. So like M2 if you love like M cameras, this has got a nicer viewfinder than an M6 and it's perfect for 35mm and 50mm if you're wearing glasses. Coming in at number 7, this is a slightly larger camera and it's not a camera that I own but I was lucky enough to use it last year. This is the Pentax 67 or Pentax 672. I've actually got a cheaper camera that I use instead, Mami RZ67 Pro 2. This is a modular camera design, meaning you can take the back off, you can take the prism off, and you can take the lens off. The other thing's back to front, so you end up going like this in front of your marbles, pretty much trying to <laughs> trying to find where they've gone. It's like the Pentax with the 105mm lens on is absolutely fantastic for portraits. And I'm trying to get close enough to get the shallow depth feel, but far enough back to make it kind of a sensible crop, if that makes sense. Very nice camera, but it's quite weighty, so you probably don't need a gym membership if you buy a Pentax 67. Number six was the Leica M3. Now this time I've dug out my Leica M3 double stroke, which has got a few more marks, but I'll show you how it sounds in comparison to my single stroke shown in the first video. Now I could argue it's actually got a it's actually got a nicer movement than the single stroke, but I'm too dumb to remember to advance it twice when I take my portrait, so I tend to use a single stroke. Amazing camera if you love 50mm and you don't wear glasses. Your fifth favourite camera is a camera I've only just bought, so I feel thankful that I'm on the right track, and that is the Nikon FM3A, as you can just see behind this motor drive. I did show this in the first video, but I'll quickly show you. It's got the motor drive on. This is how it sounds. Such a good camera. You've obviously got a lot more features of the Nikon FM3A over the older Leica M cameras. And this was my desert island camera, if you didn't see part one. Some of you may argue, why don't you just get a Nikon FE2? I do own the Nikon FE2, but this is my long-term replacement because it's, I can use it for manual without electronics, where if the electronics die, it die in my FE2, that camera's dead. So that was the reason for this purchase. Coming in at number four is the Olympus OM1 or OM1N. Now this is the camera that I used to own. I'll bring up a photo from 2010. This is me with my Olympus OM1N, and it was one of my first kind of real film cameras when I was just getting into photography. I know many of you recommended it to me as something to try. Okay, we're down to your top three in third place, the Leica M6. I would expect this in the top three because 
obviously it's a bit of a cool camera and obviously a lot of you guys love Leica with me often talking about Leica cameras. In addition to that, it was obviously re-released in 2022, so now you can obviously buy a brand new one. How does it sound? Super well dampened and just feels like new basically. This isn't a new one, but it basically is almost new. It's still got the plastic on the bottom. Now, I don't actually use it this much. If you want a used M6 and you don't need a light meter, this one, the light meter doesn't work. Um, I'm open to offers uh, for UK buyers. Okay, coming in at number two, your second favorite camera is another camera that I just bought, so I'm very happy with some of my recent purchases. Purchases is a Nikon F3. As I say, I've only had this for maybe a month. I love the fact that it's got a pop top waist level viewfinder in addition to other viewfinders. This is a professional grade camera and it sounds great too. One of the best film advances of the cameras I've got. Very nice camera and a fraction of the price of Leica cameras. There's plenty of Leica cameras. The reason I got the Canon out, if you can't afford Leica cameras and you want to take similar photos and have a similar shooting experience, pick up something like a Canon 7, Canon P. This is a slightly different one that I showed in the first video. The main difference is it's screw mount, not M mount. And so for that reason, obviously you can't use the latest M mount lenses on a screw mount camera. Okay, so the question is, in first place, which of these cameras was the winner? Your most favorite camera It is the Hasselblad 500 series. It could be 500CM, 501C, or any of the other later models. I did show this in the first video, so I won't dwell on this, but it's very nice to have a, the Hasselblad be the overall winner. I'm on the right track. <laughs> now, to make this video a bit more useful, I've made a list of 10 cameras to try before you die. Now, I think when I ask you to tell me your favourite camera, a lot of you will be telling me the camera that you own, because obviously those are the cameras that you know. But what about those more kind of luxury cameras, which maybe you've never even thought of, because they're maybe they're too expensive. So what I've done is I've listed the 10 potentially most impressive cameras that are also quite expensive that you may want to try before you die, if say you win the lottery. So here's my top 10, in no particular order. First place goes to the Mamiya 7. Now I used to own this camera. I bring up some photos or some footage. I have done a video on the Mamiya 7. It's a six by seven, pretty compact, medium format camera. I didn't really fall in love with the pictures and I didn't really fall in love with the format, but other big YouTubers absolutely love this camera. Um, if you saw the recent Grainy Days video, he had that when he did his European trip together with the Leica M6. I tend to prefer this camera, which is it's quite dusty actually, is the Mamiya 6. So this is like the smaller brother of the Mamiya 7. This is 6x6 format, but you've got the benefit of it having a collapsible lens, making it smaller for travel. I prefer the format, I prefer the size, and that's why I kept the Mamiya 6 over the Mamiya 7. The Mamiya 7 has six lenses available, if I remember correctly. The Mamiya 6 has only got three lenses available. In second place, another camera that I used to own and no longer own. This is the Fuji GF670. As I say, I put links below to all of these reviews and I did do a rave review for this camera. This is a seriously good camera if you want something compact but yet with a larger negative. It's a bit smaller, I'd say, than the Mamiya 6 in terms of flatness. And it's a 6x6 and 6x7 camera, so that's the benefit of the Mamiya 6 and the Mamiya 7. The drawback is it's a fixed lens camera. Number three, another one of my favourites in the past was the Rollerflex SL66 or 66E. This is a camera I had for many years and it offers you a lot more features than something like the Haspad that won this, this vote. Benefits of the SL66, you can close focus any lens without needing an extension tube. You can reverse mount any lens, making it into a macro lens and you can tilt every lens, which is just amazing. I found a video by the Cine Still guys, the two founders from Cine Still. I think it's Brian and he's showing one of his favourite cameras and that is his Rollerflex SL66. The reason I sold it is it's quite complicated and so I tried to shoot it like a Hasselblad and often jammed it up <laughs> because I'm stupid. <laughs> Follow the, the manual and the way that the Rollerflex works. It's an amazing camera and it'll give you that kind of tilt shift look if that's a look that you want. 
very, very good camera. Number four, this is a camera I've not owned, but I have reviewed. This is the Powerbar Makina 6.7, another 6.7 medium format camera. This is better than the Fuji GF 670 and better than the Mamiya 7 if you're a portrait photographer because you've got a faster lens. And it also then it folds flat, similar to the, the Mamiya 6 and the Fuji GF 670. This is what it sounds like. And this is the shutter. Beautiful sound. This camera for me felt a bit too fragile that I didn't want to buy it, but it can take beautiful pictures as you can see from a couple of these sample photos. Special thanks to Hide, one of my patrons, for letting me test his Plowbar Makina and his Pentax on different occasions. Coming in at number five, the Contax 645 paired with the 8mm f2 Zeiss planar lens. This camera is absolutely amazing and it was a bit of a cult camera some, some years ago. I did own this camera and it was one of my first medium format cameras. It did then develop electrical fault, so I kind of fixed it and quickly sold it. And then the price kind of doubled, so I was a bit sad that I sold it. <laughs> the look from this camera is very unique and it's quite difficult to replicate with other cameras. I have got something similar, which I'll get onto in this video, but if you want that special contact 645 look, and especially if you shoot weddings, that's a special kind of wedding look, which a lot of the Californian wedding photographers really used to do when they were shooting with Fuji Pro 400H film. Number six, this camera doesn't need any interruption, and if you like things like the M6, there's a good chance you're gonna like this camera too. Any guesses? It's the Hasselblad x pan This is another camera that I own for a series of years, and I love the panoramic photos that it takes with 35 mm film, but as you know, I'm a portrait photographer, not a landscape photographer, so eventually the price was kind of too much that I was scared to hang on to it, so eventually I sold it because I wasn't really using it for my portraits. Very good camera if you shoot landscapes or maybe street uh, cityscapes and you want those kind of long wide photos. Number seven, another amazing camera if you like landscape photography, cityscapes, things like that. It is the Hasselblad SWC Super Wide. I used to own the Hasselblad SWC M and I have done a video, I think maybe we've done two videos. This camera's got such a good lens on it, it's probably got potentially the best wide angle lens I've ever used on any medium format film camera. I found it better than the wide angle lens on the Mamiya 7. Um, some people love the Mamiya 7, but personally I found the fixed bygone lens on the SWC M much sharper and yeah, I much preferred the rendering. Amazing lens, so good that it's fixed to the camera. So this is a fixed lens camera and you can zoom focus it only. Having a wide angle zone focus camera is not particularly useful for my portraits. So eventually I found that I wasn't really using it and I needed some money to move to London. So I sold that camera as well. Coming in at number eight, this is something smaller for those of you that love point and shoot and more automated. This is the Contax T2. Again, it doesn't need any introduction and it was kind of made famous in recent years thanks to the celebrities. Contax T2 gives you kind of very sharp photos and a very small automated package. I think the younger generation of film photographers especially seem to like these kind of point and shoot cameras. Personally, I prefer to go full manual. So eventually I did sell it and then I use my Leica like, three cameras as my small setup instead. Number nine, a camera that again doesn't need an introduction. If you want a TLR camera and you want the best of the best, most people probably recommend that you go for a Rolleiflex F 2.8 series camera. So I think it's the E and the F which are particularly important. Feel free to comment below to correct me. I've got the smaller TLR cameras with 3.5 maximum aperture lenses. So I've got the Colorplex, as you can see here, seen in part one. And I've also got a Rolly Cord that's also got a maximum aperture of 3.5. But if you want something that gives you those kind of more wow portrait photos, you're going to need to get a 2.8 Rolleiflex. Finally, number 10, this is maybe a camera that you don't potentially think about because it's not on most people's radar. has about H series cameras. So these cameras, they're now currently on the H6, and then they made H1, H2, H3, H4, etc. What most people don't realise is these started off as film cameras. They then went to digital cameras, and what they did is they put a, a digital back on the on pretty much the same kind of modular camera. So it's fully modular, like the Hasbro 500 series. You've got the body, lens, prism, back. On the digital versions, this is the digital back. Obviously, you can just clip it on and off. But on certain models, you can fit a film back. So I used to own the Hasbro H3D, 
and I had a digital back and film back. I then accidentally killed that by dropping in the seed during a photo shoot in Poland. So then I got the H2, which is this one. But luckily I'm using the same film back for my original camera. So if you want autofocus and you want a 645 film format, this is such a good format for shooting portraits because it's fast being autofocus. And then you've got Hasbad quality lenses. So I'd say of all my cameras, this camera probably gives me some of the highest quality photos. I'll bring up some samples and let you decide. But if you, I prefer 645 format for portraits because often I shoot in lens, uh, portrait orientation where with a square crop, I find it more difficult to compose. Autofocus and yeah, 645 gives me more photos per roll than if I was shooting by say 6x7. Earlier models are obviously going to be a lot cheaper, the H1 and the H2, and they're going to take exactly the same photos being a film camera as if you buy the H6, which is the last one, and then try and put a film back on that. I mentioned the Contact 645. This camera will give you a similar look if you put the 100mm 2.2 lens on. It's not quite the same, but it's very close in terms of shallow depth of field. If you love the idea of 645 film format, but you want something cheaper, consider the Mamiya 645 Super. But again, I'll put the links all below, so check those out if you want to check out that camera. So those are my 10 cameras you may want to try before you die. I think they're all more expensive than many of the cameras you mentioned, so they may not be accessible to everybody. I was lucky enough to get into these cameras when they were a bit cheaper. If you missed part one, I'll click that video next, or to be inspired to shoot some more film, check out this video shot in Lisbon.